Today I award Audacity with a very prestigious award, and that award is the Kings of Poor Communication for a recent pull request they made where they basically were like, hey, here's five and a half thousand lines of code to implement telemetry into Audacity, we're not going to explain anything that's going on and make it sound as bad as possible, causing people to very rightly completely freak out and just say, no, this should not be a thing. Because while telemetry would be bad enough, they made it so, so much worse for themselves because they weren't going to be using something open source they could go and host themselves, or maybe even make something proprietary, but at least make it so they were the only ones who actually controlled the data. They were going to be using Yandex Metrica and Google Analytics, and for obvious reasons, no one wanted anything to do with Google Analytics. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, but devs are horrible at PR. They try to get straight to the point without actually explaining anything that's going on. And because of this, it was handled absolutely horribly. So everyone had assumed that it was going to be opt-out. Because the initial PR made no mention of whether it was going to be opt-in or opt-out. And you'd assume that if you have telemetry, you want to collect as much data as possible. But they did later clarify that it was going to be opt-in in the updated version of the pull request. And if you go and compile Audacity from source, they will be providing a CMake option to actually go and enable or disable the entire block of telemetry code, and by default, it is going to be disabled. And even if it is actually enabled inside of the code base, it's still going to be opt-in when you actually run the software. And then after the outrage with Google Analytics and Yandex, they realized that this probably isn't the best idea, even though they did go and clarify what data was going to be shared with these services. So Yandex is going to only receive application opened events so they can go and determine the size of the user base, and Google will only receive session start and end events, errors for debugging, file formats used for import and export, OS and Audacity versions, and then use of effects generators and, and analysis tools to prioritize future improvements. Even though that's the data going to be sharing and nothing like, you know, your name and your location and things like that, people still didn't like the use of Yandex Metrica and Google Analytics, so they will be considering trying something else out in the future. One thing that does really bother me, though, that bothers me every single time any other company does it, is they erroneously use the term anonymous. So in the prompt that actually shows when it's going to send the data back to Audacity, it says we would like to collect anonymous usage data. And then at the end it says send anonymous analytics data. Now this is not anonymous. I don't care what you say, it is not anonymous because when you actually connect back to the server, it's going to send your IP address and also assign your data set a unique identifier number. This by definition is pseudonymous. Just like on Twitter, for example, if you go and make an account, but you don't use your real name or a real picture, you go and make a fake personality just for Twitter. And then you start posting stuff. So all of these posts you make are going to be associated with this account. So you have this pseudonym that's basically being used to group together all of this data. Something that would actually be anonymous is if you just go and arbitrarily collect data, but don't actually assign any users who actually own that data. So if I go and say, take a tally of the number of people who crossed the road today, for example, but I don't take any other information about them, that would be completely anonymous. I don't know anything else about these people. All I know is this specific data point. If you are doing any sort of grouping based on a unique identifier, that is not anonymous. But at the end of the day, it is opt-in, so really I can't be that angry about it. If you go and turn it on and then your data gets sent back to Audacity, well, that's your problem then. You decided to go and turn that on, you can deal with the problems. I think it's a waste of development effort, but that's about as far as it goes. Now, you might be wondering why Audacity even went and added in telemetry into their software, because up until this point, the entire time they've existed, they've never had telemetry in their software. Well, recently you may or may not have heard that Audacity was actually acquired by a company. So they were acquired by a company known as Muse Group. So this group is responsible for making software like Muse Score and Ultimate Guitar. And this happened about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, two weeks ago, sorry. And this is basically the first major change that Muse Group is actually making 
now that they own Audacity. This is a company that can't go more than five seconds without telling you how big their user base is. So for Ultimate Qatar, it's like, oh, 300 million users, Audacity, 100 million downloads. StaffPad actually doesn't have anything, surprisingly. MuseScore, 12 million software users, 14 million users. I don't know what the difference between these two numbers are. Or with TonBridge, 2 million users. Like, they're obsessed with telling you these numbers. Presumably, it's good for their investors as well. So that's probably why they do it. And Muse Group has a really interesting requirement for any of the software they own. So this is one of the maintainers of Audacity. He's also working on Muse Score as well. And what he says here is regarding telemetry, this is a requirement that Muse have for every app in their ecosystem so they can determine how the changes we make are performing. Basically, so the company knows if their investment is actually going well. But the big difference here is this is the first time in any major way for Muse Group to actually step into a FOSS application. So all of the rest of their poster applications are all proprietary. And when you do something proprietary, you don't really have a user base there that's going to be actively stopping you from implementing these features that are really anti-user. If you have full control over the software, you can really do whatever you want. But because Audacity is being developed by a community, you have a very different way of interacting with them. And because they're very inexperienced with working with a FOSS project, they seem to be butting heads with the community. And I don't expect this to be the last major change made by Muse Group. There's going to be something else they do in maybe the coming year or maybe year after that, there will be another big change they do that is going to butt heads with the community again because they're not just suddenly going to learn how to actually interact with a FOSS project like this. But one thing I do hope they do learn from this is how to actually communicate a change, especially one that is going to be so controversial. So I want to talk about why they said they want to introduce telemetry. Besides obviously the bragging rights that Muse Group is really obsessed with, there are reasons to actually do it. So as they say here, Audacity is widely used across several platforms, but we have no information on application stability. Fair enough. It is difficult for us to estimate the size of the user base accurately. Now, the problem with this is there's still going to be no way to actually accurately measure the user base because it's going to be disabled by default. And while you do have this send anonymous analytics button, that's still not going to give you a very representative sample of what the user base actually is like. Along with this, they say we need a way to make informed decisions about which OS versions to support. For example, can we raise the minimum version on macOS to 10.10 .10 to update the WX widgets to the latest version? Once again, because a lot of people just aren't going to send analytics, you won't really get a good understanding of whether enough people have actually moved on to actually make this a valid thing to do. And lastly, we have a known issue with the new file format introduced in Audacity 3.0. We found it with the great help of the community members on our forum. However, there is no way for us to actually estimate the impact of these issues on users. Is it just a random case that one person stumbled across or a couple of people stumbled across? Do we need to rush the work on the recovery tool or help the users one by one? Or do we need to rethink the file format to make it safer and more easily recoverable? And all of these things, I think, are perfectly valid reasons. Now, this one doesn't really suffer as much by not having a very representative sample, especially if it is something that is a kind of widespread issue. However, the whole telemetry issue literally does not matter on Linux because basically no one's going to be using a new enough version of Audacity for it to actually matter because Audacity has a very serious problem and that problem is that it likes to go and vendor its dependencies. This, among other issues, makes Audacity very, very difficult for distros to actually package. So, vendoring is the idea where instead of actually relying on the dependencies you've installed on your system, what you do is you take the source code for those dependencies and just stick it in your application, which makes it work. But what it does is gives you a much larger code base than you actually need, also makes it so those dependencies, when they become outdated, you then have to actually go and update your application rather than just moving on to the newest version of the dependency. And also when those become outdated, it makes it so your code base just has these vulnerabilities built into them, even when they've been fixed in the installable version of that dependency. And this telemetry feature was going to be relying on libcurl. And libcurl was also going to be vended. 
I, it's a bad idea. That's basically all I have to say. So currently of the hundred Linux distributions that ship Audacity, three of them, three of them ship a version of Audacity 3. The other 97 ship a version of Audacity 2. So the vast majority of Linux users wouldn't even have to deal with this telemetry anyway. And that list of 97 isn't just like 97 random distros. It includes Arch Linux, Debian, Ubuntu. Well, you've got Ubuntu there, so that just covers most of Linux anyway. Manjaro and Mint. So it wouldn't even matter on Linux in the first place. A reason why these dependencies are vended is likely due to the fact that these dependencies, for the most part, aren't available natively on Windows or macOS, making it much harder to release on those operating systems which have a much larger user base. There are ways this could be done by maybe modifying the build system so it only vendors the software on Windows and macOS, or I don't know how other software managed to get away with this without vendoring everything, but there's clearly a way to actually develop software for Linux and then also develop for Windows and macOS as well without completely ruining the way dependencies actually work. How it's done, I don't know. I've never done big cross-platform development like this. Now, the whole telemetry thing is an absolute mess, and what I want to say to Muse Group is they need to be very, very careful when doing stuff like this because people in the FOSS world are not happy about just having their projects suddenly changed under their feet when they think that they are the ones actually in control. And if you keep trying to pull stuff like this without actually properly having it explained, you're not going to have the community stick around for this software, yes. It'll still have the user base, but you're going to lose the development side, massively slowing down the development of the project. And this wouldn't be the first time a company has killed a project like that. Go look at things like Nexus. When that was acquired, the developers of that were like, nope, I'm going to go make Xenotic. Or with OpenOffice, when that was acquired, the devs were like, nope, I'm going to go make LibreOffice. And ultimately, those became the more popular software. So be careful. Doing something like this again and not properly explaining it is going to hurt both Audacity and also Muse. And I do hope some coexistence can actually be met. Ultimately, this specific pull request has been closed and isn't going to be used to actually bring telemetry into Audacity. But that doesn't mean that it's just not going to get telemetry. There's going to be a redraft of this pull request and hopefully when that happens... They actually take in the feedback and change it, not use Google Analytics or Yandex Metrica, and when it actually does happen, properly explain it again to make sure people actually know what's going on. And this is how FOSS is supposed to work. Honestly, this should never have been a pull request. It should have been an issue that was made because now five and a half thousand lines of code are basically just going to go to waste. If it was just an issue and they started doing a bit of back and forth about how this could be done, a lot of time could be saved. I will leave links to all of this down below if you want to go and have a read through it yourself. Uh, if you're very bored and want to go and read over a thousand comments about this, feel free to do so. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. It's not a good use of your time, but feel free to go and do so. So let me know in the comment section down below what you actually think about this entire situation. If you think that, hey, maybe they should just never have bothered with telemetry in the first place, or they should never have been acquired, let me know what you think about this situation. Are you going to keep using Audacity? Or maybe try out something different like, say, Ardor, for example, which I hear is actually pretty good. So I think that's going to be everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andrew Nathan, David Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie Joseph, Josh, Mitchell Pitty, Stephen Tony Theroux, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support more work, the links down below to my Patreon, Subscribe, Star, Libre, Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute. If you'd like to watch on a platform that is in YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.